Hi, this is Dr. John Bergdorf. In this video, we're going to explore absolute value inequalities. And this is a good video to watch after you've watched the video on absolute value equations, because you'll see a lot of tie-in. Now, an inequality involves a less than, a greater than, a less than or equal to, or a greater than or equal to. And we're also going to be exploring absolute value. Let's start small. Suppose we want to solve the inequality, the absolute value of x is less than 5. Let's remember that the absolute value of x represents the distance between x and 0 on the number line. So I want to think about what this inequality is really telling me in words. What we're looking for are numbers whose distance between themselves and 0 on the number line is less than 5 or the numbers that are less than five units from zero on the number line. The numbers that are less than five units from zero on the number line. If we describe that in those words, this will be much easier to consider. So let's consider a number line, and let's locate the numbers that are less than five units away from zero. Let's start with negative 5 and count negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the numbers that are less than 5 units away from 0 are actually all of these numbers between negative 5 and 5. It include 0, 1, 2, 3, all of those numbers are less than 5 units away from 0. Now, would the number 5 or the number negative 5 be less than 5 units away from 0? It would not. So that inequality symbol is going to imply that we do not want to include the 5. We represent that with a parenthesis to mean the 5 is not considered part of this interval. And we also put around parentheses on negative 5. That, very simply, looking at the words, is the solution set to the absolute value of x less than 5. We might represent that in two different ways. One way we certainly would want to represent this by is in interval notation. That's probably the best way to write our final answer. It's the interval between negative 5 and 5. But I also want to write this as a different type of inequality in a way that I think might be useful to us in the future. We can write this single inequality as a double inequality like this. When I write this, I can read that simply as x is between negative 5 and 5. There's a double inequality involved. And we'll talk about how to solve those if there's more to it than just an x in the middle. Let's look at another one. Solve the inequality greater, uh, excuse me, absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 2. So again, absolute value of x represents the distance between x and 0. And we would be looking now at numbers whose distance from 0 is greater than or equal to 2. Where could you put x so that its distance to 0 is more than 2 units away? Well, let's think about that. So here's another number line. like that. Numbers that are more than two units away from zero would be these numbers, three, four, five, six, so on and so on. They're all more than two units away from zero, but also all of these numbers. These numbers are also more than two units away from zero, just on the opposite side. Now, in this case, both the number 2 and the number negative 2 would work in this inequality, so we want to represent square brackets. So this is very, very interesting because so far in looking at inequalities, we haven't seen inequalities whose solution set was more than one piece. Well, we have to have a way to communicate that. We certainly can write interval notation, and we would write the interval on the left as negative infinity to negative 2 with a bracket to indicate we include the negative 2 
and then from two to infinity represents the other one. And to communicate the idea that we want one uh, uh, interval together with the other, we connect those with a symbol U, stylized looking U, which is the idea of union. Union simply means everything in one set together with everything in the other set, putting them together. Now, I can't describe two separate intervals with one inequality unless I use these absolute values, but I could make a statement that the two inequalities that I see, the two intervals that I see here can be written as two separate inequalities. This one on the left is x less than or equal to negative 2, and this one on the right is x greater than or equal to positive 2. So if you're looking for the numbers that are more than two units away from zero, you're either looking at numbers that are less than negative two or greater than positive two. And that gives you two separate pieces. Let's look at a few more that are a little bit more involved. If the quantity inside the absolute value is something more involved, it doesn't really change the way you look at this. Again, an absolute value represents the distance between whatever that may be in the absolute value in, in the absolute values, the distance between whatever that might be and zero. In the previous video, I introduced you to my cat, Samson. So if I can just for a moment think about, instead of whatever we see there, Samson. And again, imagine that my house is at zero and that uh, what I'm looking at for absolute value Samson is the distance between Samson and my house. This is essentially saying that Samson is less than or equal to one unit away from, or one house away from my house. Where does that put him? Well, that puts him between one house to the right and one house to the left. He is somewhere in here. Or a different way to say it is he's between negative one, one house to the left, and positive one, one house to the right. Now, that is really easy to visualize, the cat being a certain distance, less than a certain distance from my house. All you have to do is instead of Samson, put in whatever crazy thing they have inside the absolute values. So this inequality here could just as well be written like this. We're not, now not talking about Samson being within one unit to the right, one house to the right and one house to the left, but three X minus seven being between one to the right and one to the left. Now, a three-part inequality is solved basically using the same principle of balance we've used on everything else. It's just that when you do something on the left and the right, you also want to do it in the middle. And your goal is to get the x by itself. So if I did something like this, if I added 7 to the left and to the middle and to the right, that would keep that balanced all the way across and it would translate to 6 is less than or equal to 3x is less than or equal to 8. And then also working all the way across, divide everything by 3, left, right, and middle to keep it balanced. And that would give me 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 8 thirds. On a number line, that would be from 2 to 8 thirds. 8 thirds, what is about that? Let's see, 3 goes into 8 twice with 2 left over. So that's between 2 and 2 and 2 thirds. On a number line, it would look sort of like this. We'd have 0 here, 1 here, 2 here. And between 2 and 2 and 2 thirds would be just a tiny little interval, basically like that. And in interval notation, we would simply say, Two with a bracket because we are including the endpoint. Eight thirds. There we have it. Okay. Let's do another one, 
but with a greater than. And again, if you think about my cat, it'll help. Seven halves is about three and a half. Three and a half. So we're saying, where is Samson if he's more than three and a half houses away from my house? Well, on a number line, that's going to mean one of two things. Here's my house. One, two, three. He's either off to the right, farther than three and a half houses, or he's off to the left, three and a half houses. That could be translated into saying that either Samson is less than negative three and a half, so I'm farther to the left than three and a half, or greater than to the right of three and a half. Two separate pieces. He is either to the left or he's to the right. Now, all you have to do is replace Samson by whatever you've got in the absolute values, and you got it made. Let's go back to uh, the improper fraction form, though. And so I would have 1 half x minus 3 is less than negative 7 halves, or 1 half x minus 3 is greater than positive 7 halves. And once you've used the, the visualization of the number line or the cat or whatever else works for you, you really end up with two inequalities, which you can then just deal with completely abstractly as they are and take it from there. Now, how would I solve these two? Well, first of all, I'm not really fond of the fractions that I see in there. So maybe what I might do first is multiply both sides by two to clear out the fractions. Two would distribute across. Two times a half would be one. So one x, two times three is six. On the right side, the twos would divide out, giving me minus seven. And then I would add 6 to both sides, which would give me x is less than negative 1. On the other, uh, for the other equation, I'll do exactly the same thing. Multiply both sides by 2. Distribute the 2 across. 2 times a half, again, is going to be a 1. x minus 6 greater than positive 7. Add 7 to both sides, and you're going to end up with x greater than 13. So either x is less than negative 1 or greater than 13. That's two separate intervals, one on the left, one on the right. The one on the left can be expressed this way. Union symbol to make sure we get both pieces. And then the one on the right can be written this way. 13 to infinity. And that's my solution. So, solving absolute value inequalities can be done fairly well if you just think about number lines uh, and distances on number lines, or if it helps to think about my cat and how many houses away he is, that might give you something to go by too. Some people like to look at it a little bit differently, and that is to sort of create like a theorem or a rule that forms a bit of a template of what to do depending on if your uh, inequality involves a less than or a greater than. And you'll see that this fits pretty well with what we've already looked at. If you have an inequality that says absolute value of x is less than a, and by the way, this would apply just as well for less than or equal to, you translate that into an inequality that says that negative a is less than x is less than a. And that's just saying that if the distance, uh, if x is at a distance less than a, then it must be between negative a and positive a. a to the left, a to the right. On the other hand, if you have an absolute value uh, inequality with a greater than or a greater than or equal to, that would have to mean that x is either to the left of negative a, more than a units to the left, or to the right uh, excuse me, or x is greater than a, which is more than a units to the right. Now, 
if you'd rather not think about number lines and cats and whatnot, you can use these two uh, lines as sort of a template to follow. Let's do one more example and show, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So absolute value of 3t minus 7 plus 2 is less than or equal to 4. First of all, uh, much like an equation we once solved, let's first of all isolate the absolute value so that that's the only thing on, one, on that side. And that simply means subtract a 2 from both sides, like that. And that would give me on the left nothing more than the absolute value of 3t minus 7. And on the right, you'd now have a 2. Then you ask yourself, which one of these two forms does this most resemble? Is it a less than or is it a greater than? It's a less than. So you use this as a template. Your a would be 2. And so this would translate into the inequality negative 2 less than or equal to, you just make that adjustment mentally as you go. The x refers to whatever is inside the absolute value bars, so that's 3t minus 7 in this case, and then less than or equal to 2, so that you're matching the template form here to this specific problem. The quantity in absolute value bars is between negative 2 and positive 2. If that makes sense to you, that is just fantastic. Now, again, a three-part inequality, you just keep the principle of balance and do it in all three places. So I would, first of all, add a 7 on the left and in the middle and on the right. In the middle, the negative 7 and the plus 7 will add to 0. On the left, you'll have a 5. 5 less than or equal to 3t. Less than or equal to 2 plus 7 is 9. And then you divide all three parts, left, middle, and right, by 3, which will get the t completely by itself. And that will translate into 5 thirds less than or equal to t, less than or equal to 3, or t is between 5 thirds and 3. And in interval notation, we would write that like this. Again, it's the numbers from 5 thirds to 3, square brackets because of the less than or equal to that you see right here. So I hope that makes sense in solving absolute value inequalities. Give that a try. Think about number lines if that's useful. Think, think about Samson and where he is relative to my house. Or think about this template, whichever works best for you.